Again, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that the line is parallel to the y-axis. If the line is parallel to the y-axis, if the line goes through the point A comma zero, notice that the only criteria for the point to be on that line is that it's x-coordinate equal A. By the way, this is often abbreviated in a textbook as the line x equals A. Many a student says, how do you know this is a line? Why isn't this the point x equals A? And here again is a good review of why we stress the language of sets. Here again is a good reason why we, change, we ex express the language of sets so strongly. Namely, go back to the universe of discourse here when you see the set of all ordered pairs x comma y for which x equals a, this gives you the hint that you're talking about pairs of points and that tells you that you have numbers in the plane, not on the line, a two, not on the x-axis, a two-dimensional interpretation over here. You see, if this said the set of all x such that x equals a, it would just be a point. But notice the hint over here. At any rate, this then becomes the equation of a straight line. If the straight line is parallel to the y-axis, of course, the other possibility is, what if the line isn't parallel to the x-axis? And here, too, we say, OK, suppose we know a point on the line, and suppose we know the slope of the line. What we will do is, is pick any other point in the plane, which we will label arbitrarily x comma y, and see what equation x comma y has to satisfy. How do the coordinates have to be related to be on this line? Well, we already know that slope does not depend on which two points you pick. Consequently, since the slope of this line is m, the slope must also be what? y minus y1 over x minus x1. And this becomes the fundamental definition for the equation of a line which is not parallel to the y-axis. And by the way, again, I think m's and x1's and y1's tend to give you a bit of hardship at first till you get used to them. Let's illustrate this thing with a specific example. Suppose I say to you, I am thinking of the line whose slope is 3 and which passes through the point 2 comma 5. And notice the language of sets here. To say that 2 comma 5 is on the line is the same as saying that 2 comma 5 belongs to the set of points determined by the line. Drawing a rough sketch over here, and by the way, Notice something very important here. I never have to draw to scale. Because you see, all I'm going to use is the analytic terms. And 2 comma 5 is still 2 and 5, no matter how I draw the picture. So for example, if I say, OK, let's see what it means for the point x comma y to belong here. I say, well, what does that mean? My slope is going to have to be what? y minus 5, that's my rise. My run is x minus 2, and that must equal 3. And if I clear this of fractions, I get what? y is equal to 3x minus 1. By the way, does this check out? If x is 2, 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1 is 5, 2 comma 5 is on the line. You see, here's the thing. We talked about the line geometrically. Now I have an algebraic equation. I no longer have to refer to the picture. I have something analytic now. For example, suppose a person says to me, I wonder if the point 8 comma 23 is on this line. I don't have to draw a picture to scale. I don't have to waste any time. I know that the equation of my line is y equals 3x minus 1. By the way, if y equals 3x minus 1, as soon as x is 8, as soon as x is 8, what must y equal? y must equal, what, 23? Is that right? And so is the point, is the point 8 comma 23 on the line? Yes. How about 8 comma 12? 8 comma 12 isn't on the line because 3 times 8 minus 1 is not 12. But notice that we can even see algebraically that 8 comma 12 must be below the line. In other words, our study of equations allows us not only to visualize lines as equations, but we can also visualize inequalities as pictures. In other words, if we have the equation of a line, if we have the equation of a line, if this is the line y equals, say, uh, 3x plus 1 or something like this, 
then what is this region here? These are all those values which lie, whose heights lie below the height to be on the curve. Again, not a very clear example in the sense of drawing the picture neatly for you, but our main aim is not to draw neat pictures here. Our main aim is to show how analytic terms can be studied very conveniently in terms of pictures.